How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to film and edit on the new iPhone 12 Pro Max. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is able to shoot 4K 60 frames per second in Dolby Vision, which allows me to have more control over the footage when editing. And being able to shoot 10-bit HDR plus Dolby Vision should overall create a higher video quality. And I'm just gonna take you with me and show you how I film with the iPhone 12 Pro. So before I show you the behind the scenes of how I shoot with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, there are a couple of things to consider when filming video in general. So I actually written a few bullet points down that I would like to discuss with you. So the first thing I would like to talk about is to pick the right time of day. So currently it's very cloudy outside. The good thing is that it creates a moodier look and the clouds also function as a huge diffuser, which creates a more softer light. And this is especially great if you want to film people's faces because it just creates this soft lighting. Usually when you film during bright sunlight, you get those harsh shadows on your face, which don't look pleasing. Sometimes having too much cloud isn't good because um, there's less light. You know, smartphones in general don't handle low light situations well. That is why I will go with the wide angle, which has an aperture of 1.6 that allows more light into the sensor. So the next thing you should consider is story. I actually don't have a story. I had a hard time thinking about what I should shoot for this particular video, but I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm just gonna walk the path and capture myself from different angles. And in the end, I'm gonna take out my iPhone 11 Pro and just take a picture and that's where the story ends. So nothing really crazy. My goal in this tutorial is really to show you how to film with the iPhone 12 Pro Max so that you can uh, use those techniques for yourself. But in general, you want to create a beginning, middle and end in your story. This way you make your content more watchable. So next we're gonna talk about framing. So because I'm filming myself alone, it's gonna be difficult to frame myself. But luckily I have my iWatch with me which allows me to use the camera app and pair it with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So what the iWatch allows me to do is I can monitor myself from a distance and start and stop recording. The cool part is I can also set focus and exposure, but the downside is I can't lock it. So I will have to lock it before I get into position. So I like to use the rule of thirds to frame myself. If you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, it basically divides the frame into nine sections. You wanna place the subject or yourself at one of those intersection points. As of right now, I position myself in the center because I wanted you to focus on me. Sometimes this composition can be powerful, but you don't want to overuse it. As for the gear, I'm gonna use the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I will be using the iWatch to monitor myself. I will use a tripod to position and frame myself. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, when I create my story, I will shoot from different angles. This makes it great to piece it together in the edit and creates a more seamless sequence. So in this video sequence, I'll generally include a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close-up. This creates a more dynamic video and makes it more engaging for the viewers to watch. It's getting cold out here. So next we're going to talk about camera settings. So in order for you to record 10-bit HDR Dolby Vision footage, head over to your settings, then select camera and then go to your video recordings and then make sure to enable HDR video high efficiency. And that's basically it. The reason why I selected 4K 60 frames per second is because 4K just has more details than 1080p. So I can crop in without losing quality when exporting it in 1080p. And 60 frames per second will allow me to slow down the footage. What you also wanna do is enable grid lines. This way you can frame the subject better. Let me now show you how I film myself using the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So in the first shot, I will be walking this straight path. I'm gonna first set up my camera. I'm gonna make sure it's leveled. And that is very helpful if you have the grid lines enabled. I'm gonna now lock my exposure and focus by tapping on it, lock it. And I'm gonna pull down the exposure just a little bit because I find the standard camera app generally overexposes everything just a little bit. 
And if I'm happy with it, I'm going to hit the record button. Wish me good luck. So for my next shot, I place the camera behind a foreground object. This way I can create more depth in my video. And the foreground object in this example are these tree branches right here. And what I also did is I repositioned the camera at least 30 degree. This way I can create different perspectives in my video, making it look more engaging. Lock my focus, push down the exposure just a little bit. As you can see with my watch, I can check if the framing is right. So I'm gonna position myself to where I would be walking. Probably stand right here. And with the iWatch, I can see if I have myself in the frame. And I do. So this is gonna be a great shot. I'm gonna press the record button, position myself and action. So for the next shot, I'm going to create a first person view perspective. I'm going to use the tripod to create a sort of handheld moving shot. I noticed there are a lot of tree branches sticking out, which again creates more depth. And yeah, let's see how that will look like. I make sure to focus to the forest area and go. So next I will be doing a handheld shot. Uh, I will be taking a close up of this tree branch just to show the viewers um, how cold it is outside, but also the beauty of the nature. And I just like how the snow is lying on top of that branch. It can get hard to focus closely. So what I like to do is first focus on my hand. Once you have your hands in focus and close enough, you can lock the focus and exposure so now i have everything nicely in focus and i'm going to create a slide shot so since i'm shooting handheld i'm also going to take some shots from my surroundings and i'm also going to shoot the trees and with these tree branches as a foreground, it emphasizes the movement even more. So again, I'm going to lock the focus, pull down the exposure a little bit, action. So for this shot, I placed the camera at a lower angle. And the great thing about this tripod is that I can bend the legs uh, to get a lower shot. I will be simply recording my feet uh, walking across this path and I used the iWatch to frame myself which was really helpful and let's see how this looks like so now I can simply press the record button and start with the scene So for my next shot, I'm going to use the tripod as a selfie stick to create an orbit shot. And for that, I'm going to use the ultra wide angle lens. Now, the ultra wide angle lens has an aperture of f2.4. It isn't great, but I want that ultra wide perspective just to have the surrounding in the frame as well. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my eye watch to sort of frame myself. It's going to be hard locking focus, so I will leave that out for now and sort of create this orbit shot like that. So I noticed this nest and I thought it would be great to have a shot of the nest and the path where the nest is in focus and the path out of focus. This way I can create a shallower depth of field. Also by placing the subject closer to the camera. Action. So we're soon coming to an end. I'm gonna walk towards the camera and I'm gonna leave it in auto because I want the camera to focus on my face as I come closer. And once I'm standing close enough to the camera, I then realize that there is a city behind the forest and 
I'm then gonna walk off the frame. And I can actually record this in 24 frames per second because I know that I'm not gonna slow it down. So I'm gonna set it to 24 frames per second and action. All right, so this is gonna be our final shot. I'm gonna create a wide shot and I will have myself walk in from the left because in the previous shot, I walked out to the right. So I want to keep that continuity in my story. Otherwise, it would be confusing. So having the screen direction in mind is important. I will also be shooting this in 24 frames per second because I don't plan on slowing it down. As I walk in, I want to position myself in the middle of the frame. I already set a reference point using a stick so that I can position myself correctly in the frame. Now we can head over to the editing room. So welcome to the editing room. So I actually edited the footage in Final Cut Pro. I know a lot of you guys want to see an edit done in Luma Fusion or in InShot, but for me, it's just more comfortable editing on a desktop instead on a tiny screen on a phone. But I'll definitely do mobile video editing tutorials in the future, so don't worry. So the first thing I did is I imported the footage onto my iMac Pro. And there are actually two ways. You can either connect your iPhone to your Mac and use image capture to download the footage. What I did is I airdropped the footage and you can do that without losing quality. And the way to do it is you press select and then you select your footage and then you click the bottom left icon. And then in the options, you can choose all photo data which will preserve the original quality of the video. So I actually already edit the video and I'm gonna do a breakdown of it. So let's hop into Final Cut Pro X. So the first thing I did is I dragged all of the clips onto the timeline and then I shortened each clip to just get the best sections. Once I have that, I searched for the right music. I use Artlist for all of my music and I wanted the music that was cinematic and had a crescendo in it so I actually shortened the music to fit it with the video and you really have to play around and see how you can shorten it together using these fade handles. So another big part is to add sound effects. I added a lot of footsteps uh, into the video just to make it come alive. I also added a subtle wind as well as forest ambient sound, which I also got from Artlist. What I also did is I added a GPS female voice since I'm looking at my watch. I thought this fit pretty well. You've arrived at your destination. So the next thing I did is I color corrected each shot. I made sure that the white balance is correct as well as the exposure. Now when you shoot in Dolby Vision and import the footage onto your timeline, it actually comes like this. As you can see, it's totally overexposed, but don't worry, you can just pull down the highlights until you're satisfied. The next thing I did is I added a LUT, which is a lookup table on the entire clip. So this is actually the Puxmal orange and teal look, which I created on my own, and I applied it to the entire clip. And what the orange and teal does is you get those nice orange and teal colors in your shot which again creates a nice contrast in your video. So one of the biggest challenges is the change of exposure. Even though I locked my exposure, in some situations, the exposure still changes. Let me show you what I mean. So in this shot, as I come in, the exposure changes. See? And what I did to fix that is I actually added keyframes into the midtones and adjusted it as I went through each frame. So this is the before. And this is the after. It's still a little bit noticeable, but overall I think I did a great job. 
In terms of movement, since I shot everything on a tripod, in post I added a digital zoom almost to every clip. So in the first clip you will notice that it zooms in. Because I like to have movement in my shot, these two clips already have movement in it. This, this clip as well, zoom in, zoom in. This has already movement in it, zoom in. zoom in and in this shot I created a digital pan to the right. So that is also a great way to add more movement in your shot and making your video more dynamic. You probably also noticed the black bars at the top and bottom. I actually didn't plan on adding black bars but I thought it would make it look more cinematic. Now it's not the normal cinematic aspect ratio that you see uh, in Hollywood movies because I didn't intend to use it. So if I would use the 2.3 by 5, it would ruin all of the shot because I didn't frame it that way. So that's why I kept the border size small, which still creates a sort of cinematic feeling to it. So once I edited the entire clip, I add a little bit of sharpening to the entire clip. And this is a great way, especially with smartphone videos, um, to make it look a bit more high quality. And that is basically it. That is how I edit iPhone 12 Pro footage in Final Cut Pro. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more awesome tutorials like this. By the way, if you're new to smartphone filmmaking, I created a free smartphone filmmaking guide that you can download. The link will be in the video description below. Hopefully you like that short cinematic video I did with the iPhone 12 Pro. I actually have similar videos like these. Here are two videos that will certainly interest you as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.